local coin shop dealer tips and etiquette. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Thank you also for liking this video and subscribing. Quite frankly, there are a lot of people who watch my videos and aren't subscribed. Maybe that's because you don't know how to do it. There, there is a button that you can press that will not only subscribe to my channel, but also a bell icon right next to it. If you click that, you'll get notified when I drop new videos. But regardless, I really appreciate you watching uh, all my videos. It's a lot of fun doing these, and I really appreciate the comments that you leave on all my videos too, so thank you. Oh, one last thing too. If you've not checked out the description of my videos, please do so. There's all kinds of cool links in there that I think you might find very useful. Anyway, for this video, we're gonna talk about tips and etiquette for when you visit a local coin shop dealer. Now, for those of you who don't know, my local coin shop dealer is Tim Marshner of the Coin and Stamp Shop in Manchester, New Hampshire. He is phenomenal, fun to talk to. And recently I asked him to you know, help us out, especially those who are maybe a little unnerved by going into a coin shop. Maybe it's your first time. Maybe you don't know what the right thing to do is. Should you wear gloves? Should you take a coin out of a flip? Well, those are really good questions to ask, and Tim is going to help us. I get emails from people saying that they're new to stacking, that they haven't been to a local coin shop dealer, but they're about to go. And they want to know, what are the rules? What are the etiquette of going to a, a local coin shop dealer? Could you maybe enlighten us on a few things? Sure. Um... I think your, your, your question is, can be answered differently by every dealer you go to. Mm. I think, um, you know, every dealer has uh, their own idiosyncrasies, I guess, mm -hmm. for it to be kind. Uh -huh. um, and I, you know, I think you really have to, you know, feel out the dealer. Right. I know I get calls all the time uh, from people who are new to stacking mm. and uh, I'm uh, more than glad to, you know, spend whatever time they need talking about it and mm. answering all the questions. I'm not sure that all dealers are that way. That can get kind of dicey when you have other people waiting, right? Yeah, um, I've, I've had a, a couple of cases where somebody has you know, come in and we were talking, you know, maybe two or three people were asking questions and mm -hmm. um, yeah, the individual got uh, tired of waiting and just walked out the door. And I, I hate to see that. So I try to uh, make sure that everybody's taken care of in a timely manner. Right. But um, you know, somebody who's new to stacking, there there are so many questions that you, mm. you need to get straight. Um, usually people start out by asking, let's say it's silver, what types of silver are available? You know, what do we carry? Um, you know, what are, the, what are the relative costs? Right. And all those things are, are very important questions to ask. Should people be prepared with cash if possible when they come? Uh, cash is the easiest. Credit okay. card fees are now in the 3% plus. Yep. Uh, debit cards or fees are around the point. Um, if you're making 2% on some silver, you hate to give away that extra point or three points to a credit card company. I hear you, yeah. Um, yep. So, you know, the cash is easiest. We don't have to worry about it. I, I take personal checks. Um, the only thing about personal check, if, if the person is not local, Mm -hmm. uh, we can't hand over the merchandise until the check clears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, they, people should be aware of that. But uh, cash, we take cash checks, bank checks, anything approaching $10,000. You, you want to be careful how you handle it because if you go across that bar, um, you yeah. have to fill out paperwork for the IRS. Okay. And um, it, it, it's even close to that. If you, if you spend 9900 um, the IRS considers that structuring, right? And you just don't want to get involved with them. Yep. If you, That's if you want point. to spend over ten thousand dollars, the best bet is to just use a check. And because uh, you know, if the IRS wants to know how you're spending the money, all they have to do is go to your bank, and then oh, get that yeah. information anytime they want it. Should people expect you to um, take their personal information when they're buying something from you? 
No, we don't. As a rule, we don't. It, you know, obviously, if you're giving us a check, we have to have some information. Right. You know, but if you're so, buying with cash, is that uh, questionable? It's it's not necessary, mm -hmm. and I I do hear from time to time that people say that some mm -hmm. dealers require all kinds of information. Um, we don't because, <clears throat> you know, even close to ten thousand dollars is not a lot of money today. I mean, when they put these rules into effect, it was mm -hmm. uh, a considerable amount of money. It isn't much buying power today, unfortunately. Right. Um, so you know, it's. I mean, everybody knows somebody who makes over a hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, even if it's only somebody on television, um, you know, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year is ten thousand dollars every month. So right. having a bar set at ten thousand dollars where the it raises suspicions is really unnecessary. We don't take any personal information because we're not required to. That's good. That's good to know. What's it like when you're trying to maybe uh, buy something from someone in the shop and someone else actually did, did they ever try to buy the stuff that they're selling to you in your own shop. Yep, had it happen a few times. Um, that's very annoying, by the way. <laughs> if you if you walk into a coin shop, let's say you want to buy, um, I don't know, uh, a gold coin or you know some silver bars or whatever. Yep. And um, there's somebody standing there who's ahead of you who's trying to sell that item. Uh, it's really bad manners to turn around and make the guy an offer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and another thing that I was wondering about when it comes to etic etiquette. First of all, you you don't wear gloves, right? When you're handling your bullion. <laughs> no, not usually. How should people handle like stuff that they're interested in buying? Well, silver eagles are always in flips. You know, the clear plastic flips. Yep. <clears throat> not the two by twos, not the cardboard ones, but right. in in um, archival quality flips. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a good idea to take it out of the flip. You can ask the dealer, but oh, usually right. you'll say, no, I would prefer you didn't. Because you that's why they call them flips is because you can flip them over and look sure. at the other side. Sure, sure. It, it's no need to really take the coin out of the flip. Um, but silver eagles, anything else, you know, even the, the proof strike buffaloes, yep. any proof coins or any, uh, you know, polished coin, a, polished die, a coin from polished dies, it's a good idea not to handle it. Okay. Um, you know, it, it, it's always a, if you really want to, definitely ask. Good, good point. Um, I know one time I was in your, your shop, uh, I almost made a mistake, something you corrected me on. Um, and that was the, when you were handing, I think it was a hundred ounce bar and you didn't want me to put it down on the glass, right? Because you got to be careful when there's that display case and how, how you handle, especially the big stuff, the heavy stuff, right? Yeah, I've dropped things on that glass and had to replace the glass at least three times. Uh, so be careful if you're handling something big and heavy at a local coin shop dealer. Would you recommend that people call first, see what kind of inventory you have before driving and, and visiting you? Uh, yeah, for, for me, it's always an idea because we sell things so quickly. Mm. Um, you know, and I, tonight I was going to go down to the wholesaler, but he he rather see me tomorrow night. So, wow. and you know, since I had this already scheduled, I told him I, I wouldn't be able to get there until 8.30. Oh, wow. And um, he said, yeah, come down tomorrow night. But uh, I have a lot of things on order. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when people have been calling me all week, mm -hmm. um, you know, I can give them a rough idea when something would be in, in stock. But it's, it's a, more because of the times that we're in that uh, we're likely not to have something you're looking for. Yeah. So that, you know, if you're, if you're looking for something immediately or something you need in the next 24 hours, sure. uh, it's always a good idea to check ahead. Cool. Well, thank you, Tim, for answering those questions. Really appreciate it. <laughs> well, I guess we'll keep the American Silver Eagles in the flips. And, well, I'm going to ditch the gloves. Thanks again for watching, and I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.